Hello everyone and welcome to Roll for a Build, the series where I'll be building whatever random thing comes out of a set of carefully thought out dispensers. We are going to begin by choosing the color palette. As you can see we have 6 different ones, color coded with different dyes, I chose them with a central block or color, a gradient for it and a second color for variation and to give myself some room to play with while building. But anyways, we have the 6 dice in the dispenser, let's see what we get. Ok, we got the pink palette, I like it, it's one of the most vibrant ones I would say, and it's a good one because we have all of these blocks that have smaller versions of them like bamboo, granite, cherry and crimson. Up next we will see what we get for the build style and vibe. Here we've got dark style, fantasy, steampunk, medieval, realistic and cottagecore style. Let's make sure everything is in the dispenser and let's see. We got cottagecore. Ok, good. It's, it's going to be weird to make a cottagecore style of build with this palette because we have no greens. I'm starting to worry, but we'll make it work. Next in the line we got scale. This is an interesting one because we can go from a tiny 3x3 area where we probably would need to use display entities to make something decent in vanilla. We got small which would probably require a mix of blocks and display entities. Then we have a medium size which is more like a regular style of build of 17x17. 17 17. Large which is 35 by 35 Then we go to mega, pretty challenging but doable in my opinion. And then we go to massive which I just hope I don't get because it's probably going to make me increase the build height to make something like that work or something, I don't know. So we have the six scales in here, fingers crossed. Small. Ok, that's not the best but it could be worse. I take it, 7x7, seven seven, sounds good. The last and most important one is called what we building and it's pretty self-explanatory but we have these six options. We can build a castle, we can build a house, we can build a tower, a dragon, some terrain or a tree. Let's see. Again, everything is in here and plop. Ok, a castle. That's good, I think. I mean, it's, it's better than a dragon. Alright, we got our draws. We are building a castle that is a small 7x7 seven seven, that is on the cottage core style and um, with this pink color palette. I'm scared. We shall see what comes out of this. So from what I've seen for cottage core style of builds, they have a bunch of vegetation and windows all around the place. And with this palette we might be able to create colorful flowers to place all around. That's going to be our strategy. But first we need to mark out the scale, which is 7x7, seven seven, very small. Let's place down the palette on the side with a variation or smaller bits for every block. This will just help us in the future with the selection of blocks. And now I'm thinking we can start with a very simple layout for the castle using polished granite. So we can have like this main structure with a small door in the center and then maybe some towers to the sides and let's grab the granite wall for that. This is giving already the castle vibes but we can make it larger by one block and yeah. I, that's that's way better. And probably a cherry roof right there should work. We got the basic layout for our castle. Now we need to detail every part of it separately. And of course for this scale the amount of small blocks that we can use is very limited. So we will assist ourselves with the use of display entities. To create those smaller details like windows for instance we can use the top half of the cherry door. We can make it smaller and duplicate it upside down. I think that's a very nice window design to which we can add some bamboo fences on the side for extra detailing. Yeah, that works. Now we just group it together and that's our window. I then repeated a similar process to create the roofs of the towers making use of the pink gradient that comes with this palette. Display entities are hard to work with but they allow cool things like diagonal or circular roofs. So of course I had to go for something along those lines at this scale. And with that I could get the two towers with their respective roofs and windows done. I'm going to be the first one to say that this is looking very weird, <laughs> but that's part of the challenge, that's part of the idea. Anyways, if we embrace the weirdness of this, I would say it's looking decent. But now let's finish it with some more decorations on the towers and on the centerpiece. And also we have to bring in the flowers to settle down the cottage core style. I'm thinking of making them with gold at the center and the crimson and cherry around for the petals. And we could then use bamboo as sort of vines that loop around, all with display entities of course. Something like this might work, I really like that we can get these circular shapes. So now I present to you the pink cottagecore 7x7 castle. 
I don't know how I ended up doing this, but I would describe this build as definitely something interesting. If I'm honest, it's so bad that it wasn't even worth showing the process for the final part. The good thing is that I barely feel inside. I don't know how that's a good thing, my brain is fried. But hey, maybe this is the castle for a chicken. Just because this was not enough of a torture apparently, I will do another roll and see what we get to build this second time. I'm putting back in all the options we already used, so let's see. White palette. Okay, that's a very interesting one, I actually really like it. There aren't as many block variations as the previous one, but still brown and white is an easier palette to work with than the pink, magenta and yellow, so I would say that we are off to a better start. Now, for the build style we get... Medieval? That's good, it might be the easiest one. Or the most common one maybe, I like it. For the scale, again, please just don't be massive. And large. That's... yes, it's a 35 one, that's, that's great, I'm very used to this scale. And at last, let's see what we build in this time. Alright, castle again. That's the only one that repeats itself, but I guess that's fine because it really does make sense to build a white and brown large medieval castle. I'm actually very happy with this draw. Let's start building. First, I want to make sure that I respect the dimension that we got, which is 35 by 35, so let's mark that out. There we go. Now, let's place down the palette again. In this scale, we are not going to use display entities. Every detail will be done with full real blocks, and I think that's going to be possible, so all the small block variations are going to be useful. As for every build in this scale, I will begin by marking out the shapes with diamond blocks. You know, that's the process that I like the most. I want this castle to have a big gate, sort of as a centerpiece, so I will begin with that, trying to get the dimensions right for it first. That looks good, and I can get a bit ahead of myself and polish the shape with some mud walls on the sides. That's the good thing of working with a limited palette. Knowing I only have two options for walls, it's easier to make these detailing decisions early on. To continue with the shaping, I used gold blocks for the walls and lapis for the roofs. I looked at a few reference pictures for medieval castles and picked out important characteristics like small windows, tall and weathered walls, and high prominent roofs. I then followed that useful information to create the shapes for the front and back of our castle. The scale is not huge, but the large size allowed me to get some interesting shapes and heights for the different buildings and towers. The shape is looking really good for this scale, and now we need to paint it, for which I think I will be doing this association of colors. The roofs are probably going to be in these two colors with mangrove as a main, mud as highlights, and perhaps dark oak as a shadow. Let me grab the mangrove and just do this with Axiom, drag and drop to change the lapis to mangrove, that's it. Now the walls will be mostly white, with the main I think being the mushroom stem. Just because it's got that sort of weathered old look that fits well with the theme. And dark oak for these diamond lines on the edge of the walls to act as trims or granulations. And I'm thinking, now that I see this, it would be good to bring that dark oak line to the front as well, under the window lines. That looks so much better, definitely it's a better color scheme for a castle than the pink one. I then grabbed the rest of the palette and went around texturing and shading the walls and roofs. In this step, I'm able to add more character to the build just by using the different colors. And it's a very entertaining process of thinking why an area would be weathered, darker, brighter or even broken down. Especially for this style of medieval castle, I needed the walls and roofs to reflect that old tarnished aspect. And even with a limited palette, I was able to achieve a pretty good result simply by layering the different shades of white. I also included the lighter browns of the mud and the interior texture of mushrooms for a stronger ruined effect, and for the roofs, the dark oak was perfect to make shadows. To finish it off, I added the details using smaller blocks like stairs, slabs and fences to act as granulations, overhangs and window lattices around the building and on the roof. And finally I decorated the inside with a simple path and some simple vegetation to the sides that helps tie together the concept for this build. So here we have a white medieval large castle. I'm confident in saying that this is an improvement from the first one. I even added a card with display entities because since we used it in the other ugly one, I figured why not here. 
But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this and I want to thank a good friend of mine, Emerald Storm, for the concept idea for this video. It was super fun. And also, if you have any suggestions for themes or steps to add for the randomness of the selection, leave them in the comments below. I want this to be a very fun and weird series, so of course you are more than welcome to participate. I'll be adding some ideas myself as well for the next one, like Ruined, for example. But anyways, if you like the video, don't forget to leave a like, and if you didn't like it, also leave a like, so then people that are likely to agree with you and dislike the video are going to be more likely to find it. Anyways, this has been Calvin, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye!